Hi again, and welcome to the Recharge Your Marriage Show, where nothing is taboo and nothing is off limits for helping you refresh, reconnect, and reignite your relationship. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Zev Halpern. Hey, I went to a seminar this week, and I swallowed fire, and I broke a board in two with my bare palm. Now, why would I do that? Answer coming up a bit later. We have an exciting show tonight. Our marriage panel guests include Andrea Brody, Chief Marketing Exec for a global software company, Kiki Ramsey, coach and author, and Lisa Schlesinger, psychotherapist and psychoanalyst. We'll be digging deep into relationship topics that you've told us you want to hear more about. Getting your relationship unstuck. What happened to the novelty? Getting some of the marriage goodies you signed up for, like companionship, caring, a spouse who's present, and mutual sexual satisfaction. That might be nice. We're talking marriage, happy and not so happy. We always value your point of view. So let us know what's on your mind and what relationship challenges you want us to focus on. Send your comments directly to zev at rechargeyourmarriagenow.com. Please sit back, chillax, open your heart and mind, and consider some ways you can invest in your marriage, recharge, rekindle. Here's today's Couple FYI. So how's your marriage? How do you two get along? Just couldn't be better. Our marriage, great. Or uh, we have our moments. Everything just status quo, same old, same old. I hear a lot of that said to me in many amazing ways. Or imagine this. A couple comes into the office to see me and, ask, and I ask, how's your marriage? More times than not, one part of the couple says, oh, it's okay, it's all right, just great. The other partner in this marital enterprise looks at their mate with shock and sometimes disbelief and says, all right, are you kidding me? What about the yelling? We don't talk. We're not close anymore. And the list goes on and on. The couple speaks for many of our relationships. We do have an amazing propensity to either turn off or be turned off, like automatic ignore shields activated. We don't do this because we're all a bunch of schmucks. Well, I can't say that for everyone. There are certainly some out there. We ignore for many reasons, for example, because of where we are in our marriage, or we're just too darn stressed with life challenges. So we protect ourselves by shutting it down and ignoring the noise. The point tonight is turned off people who ignore their spouses are not hearing what's really going on in their relationship. Missing information turns into lost opportunities for your relationship. So tonight, just a positive suggestion. Find a way to air your grievances and communicate your desires. Here's one way to achieve this. List the essential five grievances and desires. Put them out on the table, one at a time. The listener says, I heard you say, for example, you'd like a hug from time to time. This shows the other person you get them. Most important, it's a fair hearing. I hear you, honey. I understand what you need more of or less of. I hear you is a strong, positive message that will make a real difference in your relationship. People really need and appreciate being heard. I know I do. At, at the least, this will make life together more tolerable. And at the best, it will lightly nudge you to be more present in some, not all facets of your marriage. A light hearing, not an or else kind of discussion. Just a recommendation. Take a look at this 
and we'll be right back to introduce you to tonight's marriage panel. Welcome back. One quick thing before I introduce the marriage panel. After the show, please take advantage of my new free course offering, Recipe for a Magnificent Marriage. Just log in to get my course for free. You won't be disappointed. And now, let's meet tonight's marriage panel. Andrea Brody is 53 years young. She's been married to her sports psychologist husband, Dr. Evan Brody, for 28 years. Andrea is currently the chief marketing officer for a $90 million international software company whose dual headquarters in Milan, Italy, and Chicago. She has three great kids, and throughout her career, Andrea worked full-time traveling the globe for business while raising her kids. Andrea Brody over has over 25 years experience as a marketing exec in the high-tech industry. In 2015, she was awarded the Woman Leading, Women Leading Women Honor by the University of Maryland Smith School of Business. She's a native New Yorker, born and raised on Long Island, but has made her home in Montgomery County since she graduated the University of Maryland in 1987. The saying, you can take the girl out of New York, but not the New York out of the girl, could not be so right in her case. <laughs> Kiki Ramsey is a certified life coach, an author, professional speaker. Her transformational strategies help people find true meaning in life, doing the work they love. She's the CEO of Kiki Ramsey International and founder of Webpreneur University, an international community for female entrepreneurs to get empowered training and support to grow purpose-driven businesses. She's author of Get Courageous Now, A Woman's Guide to Finding Her Passion and Purpose in Life, and the Get Courageous Now Journal, both offering women a step-by-step -step guide to radically break through the mindset of fear. Kiki has personally coached hundreds to achieve greater success and is a sought-after keynote speaker. She's a regular contributor on Forbes.com and has a master's degree in positive psychology coaching. Lisa T. Schlesinger is a licensed clinical social worker, psychotherapist, and psychoanalyst practicing in Bethesda, Maryland. She continues her commitment to her patients through weekly learning groups and supervisions. Lisa has been practicing psychoanalytic psychotherapy for 20 years, working with everyday people who struggle with anxiety, depression, stuckness, loneliness, transitions, relationship, and the list goes on. Lisa's focus is on helping people understand their part in their difficulties. She's a serial blogger and has authored articles for the Huffington Post, the Washingtonian, and my tango. Thanks so much for coming out, ladies. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, so w when you were thinking about getting married, and whenever that was, for me, it was about 100 years ago. <laughs> Did you have a clue as to how things would roll, how it would go, how it would be? Anybody want to take that? I know I didn't. I was young. Um, I was around 24 when I got married. And so at the time when I met my husband, I met him online. And so that was an unknown. And then when I got to know him, he proposed to me within six months. And then within a year, we were married. He jumped on that. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. He, you know a good thing when you see it. I, I, I think he did. I, I think he so, did. so I didn't have a clue yeah. of what marriage really was. Yeah. And I don't think you're alone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, didn't, I don't think I didn't you're alone out there in TV land either. Right. How about you, Andrew? Yeah, I was married at 24. Didn't know. You know, it was almost like this is what you did. You you know, went to college, and then after college, you get married, and after you get married, you have kids, and no, I mean... Follow I, the plan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I, I was just in a wedding in, in Italy last week, and the bride was 32, 
Mm. And, you know, I think she has a better idea. So I think maybe, it, you know, sometimes More planted, it's, more, more yeah, grounded. Just, yeah, yeah. How about you? I think I did have a sort of realistic idea about marriage um, and who I was marrying. I think that a lot of people get married and then they, they sort of feel like, who is this next to me? They do. They were, <laughs> like, Trust me. What they happened do. here? <laughs> yeah, uh, so. Or who are you? Yeah. So like when they wake up in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Exactly. All right. So if we were to give some about to be married people some advice, like, because it would be nice, don't you think, if they gave us a heads up? Because we go to school, we learn all this stuff. They don't give us a heads up about marriage. Nobody tells us too much. Maybe, uh, you know, the priest or rabbis, you know, before it happens. What would you, what would you tell them to prepare for? If, if, you know, the wisdom of you. Anybody want to jump in? I would tell them, you know, it's communication, communication, communication is sometimes you have this vision of what the future will look like, but you keep it to yourself is to have those conversations is, would you ever want a dog? Would you ever want a cat? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like working all your <laughs> life? Do you not feel like working all your life? Where do you want to live? Where do you want to retire? So that this person you're marrying might know what's going on in this attitude. Pretty much, right? yeah. yeah. How about you, Keith? So I have two things. One of the things um, my pastor um, told, asked us a question before we got married. And I was like, oh, this is a very interesting question. And he said, if there is anything you would like to change about this person that they do right now, and you're, if you're going to get married, you're going to not want to take, change that thing about that person. Because mm -hmm. you can't, you can't, um, they may never change. Yeah, you can't change people. So you if, could change yourself. Right, you can right. change yourself. You can't change them, and good luck to exactly. you. Exactly. So he said, if you, <laughs> if you don't like something about this person that you want to change, then maybe marriage is not for you because chances are that thing that you don't like will never ever change. Exactly. And so I thought that was really interesting. And then the other thing is that, you know, sometimes you can't sweat the small stuff. I mean, there are things that I used to argue about and all this kind of stuff. And I was just, just like, finally, eh, enough. Let it go. It's just not important. You know, right. There are things for sure that are not important. Right. Compromise. But they were important. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. What do you think, Lisa? I think that um, what I would say is to try to cultivate a friendship. Um, mm -hmm. I think a lot of times people get married um, still feeling a lot of passion and they don't always um, cultivate, they don't, I, I think at the end of the day, the friendship is what makes a good marriage right. besides, you know, the romance. But just don't get married because you're all the novelty and you're all excited yeah. you know like uh, there's all kinds of fantasies sooner or later you know the smoke's gonna clear and right the fantasies that people have about each other unconscious fantasies mm -hmm. you know really get are sort of removed when you really live with that person right. and so you really need to find ways to be compatible so that's kind of the advice I would give okay one last quick thing in this segment every relationship has disagreements when is fighting bad when is it okay because Everybody fights, everybody disagrees, but when is it, when is fighting bad? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. What does it look like? I, I think it, it takes the form of abuse um, first, which is a vague state, I mean, it's a vague word, but um, I think abusive relation, abusive fighting where you're criticizing and you're, you know, digging at the other and you're giving people the, si you know, the other person the Calling silent names. treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, where there's just no respect and right. it's really just an incredibly volatile, you know, sort of environment. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yeah, I think that hitting below the belt is definitely um, a no-no, but also when you think that the person, other person is trying to cause you harm. You yes. Know? Well, then, then it's scary. Yeah, it's you very scary. You start to feel scared, mm -hmm. you know something's wrong. Absolutely. And, I mean, you, you should get that because yep. if it's scary, something's wrong. It's I a mean, signal. Yep. And sleep with one eye open. You know, no. It's not like, no, thank you. Right, no You'll be sleeping downstairs now. <laughs> exactly. Uh, thank you. Anything? Just, I know it's hard to be respectful, and I think it's probably what you were saying is you can't, you have to deal with the, with the topic at hand, um, but when it's, there's a lack of respect and not letting the other person speak, that's when it's just, that's when it gets bad. All right, yeah. so we're going to go to the next segment, which is called the Sexpectation Segment.
We'll be right back. So talking about sex for some, it's, it, you know, it's, it's okay, but for most, it's not. Any suggestions you might have for a couple that's having trouble talking about it, bringing it up on the table and, you know, can we please talk about this thing that we're doing you know, because uh, maybe we could improve? Mm -hmm. I would say talk about it when you are in a good place, like maybe over dinner, <laughs> somewhere maybe in public, so that it doesn't feel so taboo-ish. Um, and so if you bring that up in public or this is over dinner, you know, you're not talking loud, but say, hey, I just wanted to talk to you about this thing. So Kiki thinks basically she's about, he's about to bite into a steak. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's time to yep. drop the load. It I'm is. You. <laughs> because we're in a good place. Yeah. We're not fighting. We're you're not, at home where you, you can know, run to your corner. Exactly. Or, or you can hit below the belt in and that kind of yeah. thing. But you're out, you're having fun. Um, and I know me and my husband, we always go on date nights and we do check in anyway. So I'm like, so how am I doing as a wife? And he'll ask how he's doing as a husband. And this is our moment to give, you know, constructive feedback. Um, and so during that time, if I'm not feeling something, I say, well, you know, this has been on my mind and I wanted to talk to you about it. And it works wonders. Kiki's got a nine month old at home. I do. Wow. A beauty. Wow. Yes. A beauty. Yes, she's amazing. Anybody <laughs> else? Like, what, what, what do you, what, or can you just jump in and say it? It's just, I mean, you might be able to, but the other person, I don't know. I think the old social work um, idea of sort of presenting a positive and then a negative and then a positive, mm -hmm. sort sandwich. of like a sandwich. Sandwich. <laughs> yeah, it might help. Might get him thinking about a sandwich, though. <laughs> That's a whole other thing. How about an Oreo? I don't know. That's a whole other <laughs> Tom and Amherst thing, you know, that's going on out there. Oh, okay. <laughs> So how might having a sexually adventurous spouse help a marriage? How might it not? How might it not help a marriage? I have a comment on that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, sex is a, is a big thing in the marriage, and if there's one that wants it more or the expectation is more, it does put a strain. Uh, and again, I, I think it really comes down to some women might feel the obligation, but be resentful, and you really have to communicate. You've got to say, this is too much, I'm not happy, mm -hmm. can we compromise? Um, right, not just like act as if, you know, exactly. hey, like, mommy told me just to smile and right, you know, exactly. like, hold my and, breath. Yeah, <laughs> most women do, because... I'm sure they do. I mean, I think if you're in a, a loving relationship, you can reserve the right to say, mm, not so much. I'm not into that. But maybe we can try something else. I think. Like, it, where'd you see that? You know, and right? Then, like, mm. hey, where'd you get that one? Exactly. What you, what you watching? What you been watching? <laughs> um, so, but if you, you know, hopefully you're in that kind of relationship where you can say, but I'm willing to try something else that's similar. Right. Or, you know, I, I ran across this. What do you think? You know, getting that permission and then buy in before you actually try like the like, thing. What do you think about this? Just show right. Them the <laughs> See, just put us in the picture. And, right. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, well, what do you think? Under what conditions does a spouse agree to be a little more experimental? And, you know, and what kind of conditions do they not? I think this is about safety and trust. And so if, you know, you feel that your spouse is someone you can feel safe with and, you know, they respect your feelings, then you might, you know, inch along, you know, toward whatever... The other Good pun. Would like. I like that one. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even go, notice Lisa. it. <laughs> Thank <Lisa>. you. Boop <laughs> boop. <laughs> yup, that was part of my what training. Else? What, what kind of you know, the, the condition of it? The, the the setting. Like what's going on in your marriage and. Um, I think when you're in a very good place in your marriage, then it's a good time to try something new and adventurous. When you, or when you want to take your relationship to the next level, mm -hmm. when it's gotten stale and dry, and you're like, mm, I need something to spice this up a little bit. Why don't we try something different? I think that's a good time to actually try some adventurous stuff as well. And then they might say, "Well, can we play a board game instead?" You know. <laughs> I, yeah, I think maybe sneak attacks are actually helpful, but mm. in a subtle way. You know, a sort of seductive sneak attack, not something that would be threatening or scary, but something that 
Because I think if you're if if one spouse is knowing it has some knowledge that the other one is coming, you know, it's mm -hmm. the, tonight's the night mm -hmm. that we're going to try this adventure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's really um, beyond. <laughs> that's like Jaws coming at right, you. Right, right, you know. Right. And instead, it would be better to have sort of you know just a, a subtle sort of building up. Of course, the truth is they might not show up. To <laughs> yeah. And then you that? got scared for nothing. Right. right. So, uh, how long have you been at that at the CVS? How long have you been? You know that kind of right. You're afraid to go home. That's not, that's but even cool. bringing up the idea before the act even happens is like, would you ever consider blah mm -hmm. blah blah? Maybe. Well, yeah. in what way and in what circumstance? And yeah, that's always good because you can you can gauge what they will, are willing to right. do and what they're not willing to do. And you're like, so if you propose this, you know, exercise and they're like. Mm, not so much, you're like, well, maybe let me go back to the drawing board and then ask it in a different way. And then you can still do the sneak attack because you have- Laid the foundation. Exactly. And yeah. if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Right. But you're for sure, you've advanced um, yourselves, at least you have. Um, you know, perhaps you might hear some comments you know, in the morning, I'll well, no. <laughs> you know, like, hey, do that again, or right. whatever, I, 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 I don't know. Um, so I'm gonna talk about orgasms. What do they do for us emotionally and when we're out there, you know, in the world? And, and, and is there a difference between having it with somebody or bringing it on yourself? You know, we're in the advent of sex toy explosion, and mm -hmm. there are many people who are solving their um, sex problems, you know, using toys and, and the parties. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure some of you have been to some. And um, what do you think? Like, you know, they showed the, if I could, if I guess I could say the Viagra commercial where the guy walks in, you know, and he's all happy and he walks into the corporation. He's jumping, everybody's looking at him and saying, what's different about him? You know, like, what's going on with him? And the point was, is that uh, finally, I guess they um, mm -hmm. had some, you know, action. So what do you think? I mean, what does it do? I mean, I have three women here. I, I think that it brings people back to um, the way they felt when they were actually in their mother's womb. Uh, there's a sense of sort of a union that um, um, brings up a kind of intimacy, not to mention that there's physiological you know, things that go on that make people in better moods and um, reduce anxiety. And, um, and I think there is a difference between masturbation or, and being, being with a partner in terms of orgasm. Like what? Um, well, um... Because there's a lot like, of porn out there, and there's a lot of people hitting that porn. It's a part, <laughs> it's sort of like what we call sort of a part object. If you look at porn or you're using something just by yourself, I think that, um, you're not relating anymore to another person. There's actually well, something... I think I, it's good to do both. I there think, um, being by yourself you can figure out what you like and what you don't like and you can communicate that to your partner and you know if you just it's you by yourself and going oh i think i like that you know then then it's something you can share you can, with the partner. you can figure out your spot and, and exactly you know. and even doing it with your partner is it's really that's intimate too yes that's very so. much so i think it's interesting though that you say that because I, I agree that you can figure out your spot but then what if your partner can't hit the spot? <laughs> so then, then we're I've having heard that a problem. Too. I've yeah. heard people complain yeah. about so that. Yeah, so it's like too. you. Well, then you use the toy with your partner well, to get yes. to the spot. Yes. So that's yes. another thing, though, the introduction mm -hmm. of technology to our marriage. Yeah. Know, that's a whole other. Yeah. Um, but it, but well, it's Well, you know me it's and my, my internet-based Yeah, life. I mean, yeah. you know, we, we had that. That's <laughs> a, that's but I think, amazing. you know, with, um, you know, with having an orgasm, first of all, it makes you happy. Um, and it releases those endorphins yes. and everything. And who doesn't want to be happy? Exactly. Um, and I think that when, you know, we, one of our six core values as humans is connection. That's right. And so that's why I think that, you know, having that with another person, it fulfills a core value that we all need, which is that connection piece. That's right. I think so too. Yeah. But I do agree also. Um, that it's important to know your body, know mm -hmm. your soul, know your psyche, yeah. and what yeah. fantasies you like, and mm -hmm. how to convey that. So and not feel both bad about it. Yes. No, not feel yes. because so many people feel so guilty about right. it. Absolutely. Well, that's all the time we have um, for tonight. Thank you so much, uh, Andrea.
Kik, Lisa. A great marriage panel with a lot of information and a lot of wisdom. And uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you being here. So to find out more about our marriage panel guests, here's how to contact them. To connect with Lisa Schlesinger, to connect with Kiki Ramsey, My consulting and coaching practice has allowed me the privilege and opportunity to work with couples with a wide array of relationship and marital challenges, including infidelity, communication, sexual concerns, both face-to-face -face in Maryland and virtually all over the world through my online relationship and marriage intervention practice. I invite you to find out more about how I can counsel and coach your marriage through my signature programs, Recharge, your marriage now. Get in touch with me and you can begin to enrich your marital communication skills. Be heard and listened to. Say what you need to say to each other. Resolve some of that raw marital conflict. Reconnect for a deeper, more fulfilling relationship. Spice up your marriage. Don't some of you want to feel the love again? Please like my Facebook page, Recharge Your Marriage. Follow me on Twitter. Instagram, subscribe to my YouTube channel where you can see this show. This is show 34. Finally, and I'll ask the panel to help me a bit. Try some forgiveness if you can. Hug, kiss, anything else? Touch, have a laugh. Any ideas? Uh, some, some fun. Puns. Put a little novelty. Yeah. You know, some people like to cuddle, some people yeah. don't. Some adventure. Oh, have Hold some adventure. Hand. Hold your hands. Hold hands, laugh a little, mm -hmm. talk about what you need from each other. Anything else? Risk and approach your spouse even when you're scared to. Say you're sorry. It's hard, but say you're sorry. Remember, we're the sum of our mistakes and our successes. So it's okay. We're only human. You can try again. I'm Zev Halpern. See you next time for Recharge Your Marriage.